All right, all right, all right. We're gonna take control of our stars. Take control of your stars. Anyway. All right, so the image that I'm gonna use for this total complete star control process tutorial is an image I did back in 2021. Wide field of uh, M17, the Omega Nebula. Yeah, I think it's M17. I don't know, I'm shooting from the hip right now. Uh, so what I've done so far is I've used pixel math to combine the hydrogen and oxygen together. And I've got uh, my RGB image here. And what I've done is I've just done a mild stretch. I didn't really, you, you know, you can't really see all the nebulosity that's in there. As a matter of fact, if I open up the luminance, which would, is going to be the HA, this is an STF, so you can see all the the uh, really faint luminosity in the background here, but obviously it's blown out. But it is a linear image. This is my luminance, and what I've done to this image here is I've just run uh, the Easy Suites up here in the script. I've run the Easy Denoise on it. And the image that I did back in 2021 of this area, ugh, ah, I know, right? It's like looking at your high school photo. Is a real indicator of what very little star control I had over this and how much I really tried to push the nebulosity. And then as so many of us do, then we try to employ some star reduction techniques, techniques, techniques at the end of processing. And this process that I'm using or developing, yeah, I'm taking credit for it. It starts from the very beginning. Uh, and just so you know, disclaimer alert, I'm using two different programs. I start in PixInsight and I move over to Photoshop. Um, that's just what I'm doing. So most of us probably come from Photoshop to PixInsight. So hopefully you have both programs. This is the image that we did. You can see it's a nice flat star field. Like all of our stars are kind of the same brightness. Um, they're just overpowering the nebula. And you know, at the time I thought it was good, but now it's not. Uh, so we're gonna minimize this image. We're gonna use it for comparison later on. And like I said, I've done my pixel math iterations here. I've got my two images and I've just done a really mild stretch. The next step, and this is why I want to show you, is I'm gonna minimize this image 19. And I'm gonna open up my luminance that has had the denoise run on it. And I'm gonna hit F12 to kill the auto stretch. And I'm gonna stretch it myself. Um, and because this is the beginning of star control. So let's make a check mark here so we can see our histogram. We're gonna move our midpoint slider over. And we're just looking to build these stars up to an acceptable level without losing them. You see that star right there is blown out. We're gonna just boost this image just a little bit more, keeping our stars small. Okay, right about there. That's it. That's a really mild stretch. And it is really matches, you know, the amount of nebulosity that we have in the background. So those images pretty well match. Uh, so let's minimize this. Let's open up our image 19 here. We're gonna open up LRGB combination, reset the tool. Drag our luminance, drop it in here. We're gonna turn off our RGB. I do wanna apply some chrominous noise reduction. I'm gonna move this saturation slider down, which is going to apply more saturation. And then I'm gonna apply it to the RGB image. I don't know why in the world my process console won't retract tonight. It's always something different. Okay, so you can see uh, we've got a really nice clean image. There's the before the after nice smooth hydrogen uh so next step now is going to be to remove the stars and i use a star exterminator i don't know why i drew that over there star exterminator i do want to generate a star image so i'm going to go ahead and remove them because this is as big as i want the stars to be to start out with and i'm going to control them even more in photoshop that takes forever but guess what 
it yielded a badass image. Badass. Okay. Uh, so let's do just a little bit of stretching. The video is not about really stretching, but we're going to do a little bit of stretching. Okay. We're going to open up curves. Just bear with me. All right. Uh, right about here. We're just going to lift. Create a couple of S curves because I just want to show how we can really preserve the nebulosity in the image. Ooh, doggy. Maybe boost a little luminance. See, it won't go away. Comment down below. Let me know what's going on there. It's so aggravating. Ooh. C component, in case you don't know, it's like a vibrance. Okay, we're going to do one more round of of uh, RGBK boosting here. Right there. Pull it down. Oh, man. That is... Look at that. Oh, I can just pop that. Right there. Cool. Man. You don't like that? Go watch another astrophotography channel. I'm telling you right now. Okay. Cool. So let's close the real-time preview. We've got our stars right here, right? We've all got a little bit of color to them. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's minimize the tool. So we're gonna go File. And we're gonna Save As. Um, I'm just gonna create a new folder here. New folder. Image 19, I wanna save this as a TIFF save I want to save as a 32-bit click OK all right manually close that again open up our stars file save as uh, we don't want to save it as file save as image 19 stars tiff 16-bit click OK and we can just minimize them and open up Photoshop. Now let's go in here to our new folder and grab both of those files. Okay, so we got our image 19 looking spectacular. Uh, and here's a here's another reason that I like to bring this into Photoshop is I want to take advantage of the um, camera raw filter tools. So duplicate the copies open up the camera raw filter and run two different kind of iterations here this clarity slider almost acts like um, a high pass filter in itself or a localized histogram equalization you know it really when applied minimally here can really give you some pretty cool effects I'm going to run dehaze on it just a little bit. Add a touch of vibrance to this image. Oh, man. Uh, okay, so we've done the uh, first iteration of the camera raw filter. So let's minimize that. We're going to duplicate the copy. And on this top copy up here, we're going to open our camera raw filter back up. We're going to come down here to the details tab and we're going to really push that noise reduction and our color noise reduction somewhere in there. And you're like, ugh, hold on, hold on. Okay. Really just cleaning up this darker area here. Uh, we're going to create a layer mask. Click that little circle right there. Come down to the bottom image, control A, control C, control A to select all, control C to copy point at the layer mask that we just made hold down the alt key and click it it gets us inside the layer mask we're in control v as in vector to paste the image and control i to invert the image your image adjustment levels and we're going to drag this, this black slider over and what is black will not receive any noise reduction and what is white will 
It's that simple. Okay. Click OK. Right click on the image and say merge now. And say select, deselect. All right, so we've got a really smooth image. Our details didn't get uh, disrupted with the noise reduction. Probably a little touch of bright, but who cares? That's not what this video is about. Uh, okay, so let's come over here. Before we come over there, we're gonna duplicate the copy. Duplicate the copy. We're gonna duplicate the image, make a copy of it. They are identical. Now here's where the fun begins. We're gonna come over here to our stars. We're gonna say Control A to select all, Control C to copy. Come back over here to our image. We're gonna do two of these, Control V, Control V, okay? So we've got two images. Let's turn the top one off. Select this layer one right here, our first copy of our stars. And we're gonna change the blending mode to color dodge. Bam, very little tiny stars, okay? Uh, we're gonna come up here to this layer two. We're gonna turn it back on. You're like, well, where'd everything go? We're gonna change its mode to screen. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the opacity. We're gonna drop it all the way down. Whoop. And we're gonna bring it back up. What about there? To me, that's what I like. Scratch my head. Okay, cool. Uh, so this image right here, because we've put these two uh, star layers over and we've got color dodge and screen, it's gonna kind of fade out uh, the nebulosity. So what I wanna do is come here to this image. I wanna go to image, adjustment, curves. And I want to just put a small little S curve, just a boost. And right here on the back side of the histogram, just drag it down. Right about there. The hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. preview. See that? Click OK. Yeah. All right. So watch this. This is the next step. So we're going to come in here to layer. We're going to come down to flatten. OK. We're going to duplicate that copy. I always say duplicate the copy. <laughs> There'd be three of them. Anyway, uh, we're going to come back here to our stars. We're going to go to image, adjustment, levels. We're going to grab this midtone slider and pull it over until we brightened our star image. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Uh, so control A to select all, control C to copy. Come over here to our image. Control V to paste. Ugh. So we're gonna take this middle layer now, which is a middle layer. We're gonna push it above the star layer. So our star layer is underneath, our background copy is on top. We're gonna to select this layer one. We're gonna go down here and change that to screen. Come back up here to the top copy. We're gonna come over here to our eraser tool, okay? And Eraser tool. We have the flow and opacity set to 100%. We want to turn these stars back on. Use our bracket keys. Let's grab that big star. Bam. Look at that. So, all we're going to do is we're going to come back here to some of these bigger stars. We're just going to turn them back on. We're going to give them uh, their full stretched brightness. All right. And this is where you're like, is this science or art? Well, it ain't science, but it is pretty snazzy. But theoretically what I'm doing is I'm taking these bigger stars and I'm emphasizing them. Whereas I've de-emphasized a lot of the background stars and I've really, which emphasizes the nebulosity. So this image here didn't really have a lot of huge stars in it, but all the bigger stars, I definitely want to make sure I'm turning back on here. And what this does, and if you watch this channel, you know I'm big on depth. And this definitely creates a lot of depth in your image. Um, we're going to have one more layer of control. Remember, it's all about control. Janet Jackson control 
Wow, I just dated myself. Okay. So I've turned a bunch of the stars back on. Um, I can't stop myself. You guys are like, this is so boring. Okay, so I've turned these stars back on. And so watch, what I can do is come back here to this layer, uh, the star layer here, and I can drop the opacity down. So if you're doing this and you're like, man, that's too punchy, drop the opacity down, raise it back up. To where you like it. Right about there, 70, 80%, 100%, 0%. Look at that. You can just turn them on and off. Look at that. They're, they're twinkling. That is some serious control, man. Right? Okay, so we're coming here to layer, um, flatten layer, and then file, save. And the last step I like to do is kind of sharpen everything. So we've saved it, we can just minimize Photoshop here. Come back in here to file, open, a new folder, image 19. Here's our image, process, Control thingy will not retract. Spring must be broken. Uh, let's expand it. We're going to come in here and grab a luminance. We're going to take this uh, luminance now that we created a mask. We're going to apply it to the image. Uh, right click on the image and come over here, mask, and say show mask. Push that image to the side. I'm going to open up uh, multi scale linear transform MLT. I have a icon made called MLT under slash underscore under slash. <laughs> oh, I swear I need to start drinking. Uh, sharpen. I want to sharpen the image. Uh, let's create a preview right on the cool part of the nebula here. Uh, these settings are really aggressive. What I want to do is come here to this uh, layer two. I'll drop that down to maybe 2.5. Let's drag and drop it onto our preview and see what it does. Two man, get out of the way. So control shift and Z. Probably a little too crunchy, but man, does this tool really sharpen. I love the way it sharpens. Look at that. See how it looks from, from a distance drop it on might be just right Eh, get out of the way let's minimize it I think I like it again not what the video is about mask remove mask but our stars are nice and tight uh, nebulosity's got good uh, structure and sharpness to it now we could have spent more time really pulling out some more of that nebulosity, but like I said, again, not part of the video. Uh, so let's do a comparison. Let's come down here to this uh, image 22. <laughs> God almighty. Yeah. So what do you think? Mega difference, right? I mean, this is like, I can't even see you. Where are you at? To hey, how you doing? Uh, yeah. So this has zero star control. I was totally dependent on the stretch factor and and uh, whatever other things were going on at the time. Looks like I had some personal issues, uh, and now we've got major star control. You know, we've got really good star depth, and our focus is not on the stars. The stars are there, makes it look like space. It's not a starless image. But you know what? It's almost like the best of both worlds. Because when you do starless images, you're like, wow, that's cool. Uh, but most people still like to have the stars in it. So what I feel like is this gives you the kind of the best of both worlds. You get that really heavy nebula punch without the stars just completely saturating your attention. And being little attention hogs, right? So that's it. That's what I want to do. A quick video on controlling those stars using the two different programs 
And uh, if you watched my previous video, there was a SAR control method that I used where I stayed in Pixin Sight, did everything in there. Um, definitely try to try that option out too. But I like what Photoshop does. And uh, yes, definitely leave me a comment and let me know why this little icon won't pop away. What's going on, man? Anyway, until uh, until next time. Yeah, until next video. Uh, clear skies and clear minds. I think I forgot to say that last time. Shame on me. It's been a while. Anyway, see ya.